Hello to fellow disciples in Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Widow's Oil. Today we are going to look at the question, what is meant by the everlasting gospel? Um, if we look in Revelation 14, verse 6, we read there, it says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. So we see there that this um, first of three angels flies through the heaven and has the everlasting gospel to preach. So we want to answer this question, why is it called the everlasting gospel? What, what does that mean? Now, after we looked at Galatians 3 in um, our, my previous video, um, it's much easier to understand what is meant with the everlasting gospel. We, we know that Jesus sent out the disciples um, with a great commission and told him to preach the gospel to every um, every tribe, tongue, nation, peoples. Um, but we also saw in Galatians 3, um, in verse uh, 8, where it says, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, Preach the gospel to Abram beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abram. So we said that the gospel was, was actually preached to Abram 430 years before the law of Moses. And then also here yeah, we saw that it says there that this covenant um, made with Abram was confirmed by God in Christ. So it was the, uh, the gospel of faith in Jesus Christ, the gospel of grace. Um, and now we can see that this gospel was preached already uh, to, to Abram and that it says the scripture actually preached this this um, message, this gospel to Abram. So um, what we are seeing here is that this, this gospel comes from Abram. And we can actually even see the gospel before even Abram. Um, now, I'm not saying that is the, uh, the scripture that Abram that preached to Abram, um, but we do see the gospel right here at the beginning in Genesis 3, where the, the Lord God says to the serpent, he says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his head. Heal. Now you can see that seed is capitalized. It's capitalized and um, it refers to the Messiah. So the promise of the Messiah was right from the start. And that is what I think could be why it's called an everlasting gospel, because it's always been the gospel right from the start was that God's plan was this gospel that we would be saved by having faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Now, if we look here in Galatians 1, we can also see the same thing that Paul says there is only one gospel, although he also speaks of another gospel and another Jesus, but he says it's not really another, it's a perversion. So let's look at that. It says, 
I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and I want and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And we have said before, so say I again. As we have said before, so now I say again. If anyone preaches any other gospel to you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. So Paul is saying here, yeah, there's just one gospel, although there are perversions of that gospel. And the same thing he says here in 2 Corinthians 11. Um, from verse 4, he says there, For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. So um, we are speaking here of another gospel and another Jesus um, as the King James Bible um, actually puts it. I am, am using yeah, the New King James just to because I'm reading it, but um, it is better to use the King James if one wants to um, actually understand doctrine in the Bible because the King James has all the regular expressions that you can compare with each other. Things like another gospel, another Jesus. So if we use different translation, translations, then certain expressions get lost. Um, think of expressions like the Israel of, of God. Um, there are certain expressions that are used repetitively in the King James Version, and it helps us pick these up. Whereas if we're using a, a, a modern translation, well, sometimes they may express something very well. They are not good for studying doctrine. So you should use the King James Bible. But as I say, for us to read it, I'm using New King James and I will just refer to what, what the, the King James Bible um, actually uh, says. Let's have a look there. Let's see if we can find the King James and just see how it um, how it's, it says it there. Let's, uh, let's quickly look. There's your King James. Let's look at the authorized King James because that's King is the authorized King James. It's the, like the King James, but that's the authorized one. Okay, so yeah, you can see in the um, authorized King James ver version, like I say, it used the the um, terms another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. So what Paul is sa saying is. While there isn't another gospel, there's only one everlasting gospel, the one that was already preached to Abram and which Jesus um, sent out the disciples to, to spread across. Firstly, he came to, to, to for the lost sheep of Israel and then it went out to all nations and um, so this other gospel is, is not really a gospel. It's a perversion. And so the everlasting gospel means the gospel of grace that um, was preached to Abram. And that is the, the only gospel that has life in it. Paul said the other gospel, uh, um, a person is accursed when they when they preach that gospel and it made me think of the fig tree you know that Jesus cursed um, so the everlasting gospel has life in it and it will last it will never end um, it is everlasting whereas the any perversion 
is accursed and it is it it will not last. So that is what's meant with the everlasting gospel.